Hello class, thank you for joining me for another another day of uh, of another class. Thank you for joining me, whoever might be listening to this uh, YouTube channel. And thank you for any of the teachers that are working hard uh, to make this channel happen. And uh, thank you once again to our uh, second teacher, Brother Dennis, for doing his part in uh, with the youth class as well. God bless you, brother. God bless your family and everything that you're doing. And also, God bless our pastors as well um, that are that also have uh, uh, helped us and have supported us in, uh, in every single one of uh, the activities that we do at church. God bless them as well. And um, today is a very special day. Thank, um, thank God that we have our new, uh, our new uh, books for the new um, lessons that we're about to learn. Um, so uh, hopefully you have your new book right there where you're at. Um, and today we're going to um, start Unit 1, and it's called Lessons from Nature. And uh, the first study is Learning from the Eagles. So Lessons from Nature, and we're going to be learning about eagles today and uh, how that relates to us in our um, in our Christian walking and uh, and the ways that uh, that God actually compares us to the eagles, and uh, we can learn a whole lot from them uh, once we actually get into the class. So, if you don't mind, really quick, let's go ahead and uh, if you want to go ahead and join me in a quick prayer, so we can uh, get our class started today. Thank you, God, for all the times that you have given us here, God. Thank you for this channel. Thank you for this opportunity, God, to be able to. Take your word, God, to different listeners, God, and even the the regular listeners that we have in church, God. I ask, God, that this word may be able to reach out to them, that they can relate, that they can learn, God, and that they can also put it into action in their daily life, God. Please use our youth, God, and please use the youth around the world. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. All right, guys, so let's go ahead and get started with our class here. Um, as always, we're going to go ahead and start with the scriptures. So go ahead and follow with me wherever you might be. And it starts with Job 39, 27. Does the eagle mount up on your command and make its nest on high? On the rock it dwells and resides, on the crack of the rock in the stronghold. Have you not known, have you not heard, the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth? Neither faints nor is weary. His, his understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the weak and to those who have no might. He increases strength. Even the youths shall faint and be weary and the young men shall utterly fall. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Therefore, we do not lose heart. Even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us as a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Beautiful uh, reading from the Bible. Our main idea here is God wants every young person to be victorious over life's, life's difficulties and experience. So God wants us to come out as winners, okay? And he does not want us to fail um, at our difficulties um, that we're going to experience. And I think all of us know now that we are, we are all going to have trials and tribulations. As long as we are in this earth, there will be problems until the day that the Lord comes back for us or if we pass on to his presence. Um, so first goal is to analyze the behavior of eagles to learn from them number two is understand that god wants us to live in victory over difficulties and number three is undergo a transformation process with the help of god and also our memory verse it's um, isaiah 40 31 and we did read that already but i'm going to read it again but those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk 
and not faint. So, um, I think a lot of us um, in our class know quite a bit about uh, eagles. I think um, everybody that has lived in North Carolina might have actually seen an eagle. Uh, if you haven't seen one, then um, you know maybe you're bound to see one uh, very soon because we do live in a in a region that does have quite a bit of eagles. Now we're where we specifically live might not be the mountains. So eagles might not be uh, really plentiful right where we live because I know where a lot of you guys live, I know it's mostly the window, uh, Raleigh type area, um, and also me and Smithfield, which isn't that far away. But if you head more towards um, the mountains, uh, the Appalachian Mountain region, you see quite a lot of eagles. And the only reason why I know that is because I actually visited... Um, the Appalachian Mountains in uh, Bryson City. It's a place really high up in altitude, and uh, we did see a lot of um, wildlife wildlife um, in that area, and uh, it was a beautiful experience. But um, it's really amazing um, to see these birds. They are considered uh, the queen of the bird family, I guess you can say. They're they're considered one of the the highest uh, uh, lordships. It's kind of like, um, and, and we like to say that the lion is the king of the jungle. It's kind of the same way with eagles. Uh, they're kind of like the king or queen of the bird family. Uh, and the reason why we say that is because they are designed uh, to fly at very high speeds and also... Um, elevate to very high speed um, to very high heights as well that's why they live up in the mountains um, we don't see a whole lot here now and then we do but if you head more towards the mountains that's where you see most of them because they have to live they usually live in a very high alti um, altitude and also they are uh, even um, on a on the flag of Mexico um, if you know what the if you ever seen the flag of Mexico, it has an eagle in the middle of the flag with a with a serpent that he's kind of holding on to, and it was also a symbol for the Roman Empire as well. Um, that's one of the symbols that they had, and I mean the the eagle has just been very decorated, very looked upon as uh, something great, um, something very. Um, very uh high, highly thought about so yeah the the eagles are, are a very amazing creature and what's even more amazing is um our christian walking actually can relate a lot to the eagles um that's why the bible mentions and actually compares us to the eagle um for example the apostle paul uh, apostle paul says even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. Um, that right there is actually a characteristic that an eagle actually has. And we're going to get into that a little bit later. Um, but just to give you a brief rundown, an eagle actually has to go through a, re a rejuvenation process where they actually um, have to go through something that's very painful but they also come out renewed, and I'm going to get into details on what they do. Um, it's just not right now, because right now I'm just giving you the, the rundown. And one thing that's uh, also amazing here, in the Bible, the eagle is mentioned 32 times in the whole Bible. So if the Bible is mentioning a lot of the eagle, then it's very important that we understand what eagles do and what is their characteristics so we can also compare that and um, relate that to our own um, to our own walking with Christ. So um, every day I, as, as young people we hear a lot of our friends um, that might have maybe joined a gang or are struggling with addictions of alcohol, um, cigarettes, drugs, uh, and, and a whole lot of other stuff that we could probably mention. 
And when when we fall and a young person falls to these sort of vices and, and these tricks that the world brings into their mind, um, it's a characteristic of them living a very low um, quality type of life when God, like the eagles, he wants us at a very high quality of life. He expects us to, to be much better than that, to fall into temptation, to be a, another young man that uh, is just drinking himself to death from alcohol, or another young man that is just stuck on, on drugs, or another young man that 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 never got married, but he has seven or eight kids rolling uh, going around, and he's not even, you know, helping uh, whoever had these kids raise them. Um, so, whenever as young men you fall into these traps, you're living a very low quality standard of life. When you have the tools and you have the resources to live at a much higher quality, as young men and women that you are right now. You have opportunities that are available to you. You have doors that are open to you. You, Your mind and, and, and the strength that you have is something that an older person does not have. If, if you ask a 50 or 60 year old man to run one mile and then you ask a, a 21 year old to run one mile chances are that the 21-year-old is probably going to run that mile a lot faster than the 60 or 55-year-old. And that's just because you have um, a resource of strength that's much better than someone that's uh, a little bit older. And, and it's fine. I'm not saying anything bad about older people. But you have those resources. You, you are actually um, with a lot more opportunity open to you. And same thing is with your mind. Um, I I do know that when people are younger, they usually absorb stuff a lot quickly than older people. Um, for example, my job consists of uh, finances and uh, talking to people about their finances um, since I work at a bank. But um, if you were to put me in a job field where you do nothing but work on concrete, I, I'm going to be a lost person but a young guy just coming out of school I know school kind of kind of focuses on everything and once you go into a job role you kind of know a little bit about everything so you can kind of hone your skills towards that I would not be good in a in a fel in, in a job where you have to pour concrete I don't know how that stuff works and maybe I'm knew a little bit about it when I was in high school, but as of right now, my focus is on something completely different. So that's the big difference between uh, somebody who's very young, somebody who's just starting out. They're, they're, it's kind of like you're starting with a clean slate um, and you can kind of build someone up from there. So you have very, very good opportunities in your life, but when you waste those opportunities, when you're living a very low quality quality level of life, when you're not assisting church, when you're uh, constantly just going out with friends, when you can't seem to stay away from alcohol or, or smoking or any of that sort of thing, that's when your high quality of life is being replaced by a lie of the world. We have seen people that have told us there is nothing in the world for you to find except regret. Um, and a lot of um, our older um, testimonies in the church have told us that many times and many times over and over that we do not want to waste our time with things of the world. We should waste, I'm sorry, not waste, but use our time in church seeking God, even though that might not be the most popular thing for a young person, that is the smartest option um, by all means and in all aspects. So let's go ahead and keep learning about the eagles here. Uh, the And point number one is the eagles build its nest on the rock. They build their nest on the rock, on high altitudes. And why do they do this? 
The Eagles seek safety in unshakable places such as the rocks on the tops of mountains far from its enemies. So, the eagle, we can tell just by this aspect that it's very, it's very solitary. It does not stay close to enemy territory. And that's one of the, possibly one of the toughest things for a young person to understand. When you are having a moment of loneliness, when you don't really go out where a lot of other young people go, for example, the club, you don't participate in going out to parties where people are drinking, those sort of dwelling places can be very solitary. There's usually nobody else around. But also when you don't go to these places where there's a lot of drinking going on, when you don't go to parties where uh, people might be driving around drunk, you're also stepping away um, from things that can make you fall in life. You're stepping away from uh, darts of the enemy that can confuse you and actually drag you down a different direction. Now, I'm not saying that if you don't have any friends and you have to be antisocial and step away from everybody and nobody can know about you, that's not what I'm saying at all. What I am saying is that there are a lot of young people who love this type of social life. And I completely understand that because I went through high school and I know that the cool social life is probably going to these different places. Um, maybe it's something different now, but I know that things haven't really changed a whole lot. Um, I talk to people that are going to college I've talked to people that have gone, that just graduated high school, and it's pretty much the same thing um, as far as I have heard. So when you step away from these things that tempt you to lose your, your focus, um, you're basically also limiting yourself from the enemies like the eagles do. They're in high places when there's very few predatory creatures that can harm them they're away from enemy sites and you are away from the enemy sites when you on sunday are going to church on friday you're not going out just driving around cruising or something you're listening to maybe what i'm talking about right now maybe you're in at home on your phone maybe you're putting it on the tv somehow but when you're doing these things you're limiting yourself away from the enemy sight lines you are actually finding a high altitude place where you're safe and your christian life can will be tempted but not into the extreme that you're out searching in these places where um, more things can take advantage of your youth and your young life and you're walking with christ uh, point b here is the eagle soars above the storms so we talked about how the eagle can fly at a very high altitude. So they usually high um, fly above any sort of storms, thunderstorms, rains, hurricanes, that sort of thing. So because they have that characteristic, that means that the storm does not actually affect them in a way that it can affect other people. And our life as Christians, a lot of people think, that our life kind of looks like we are not very affected by certain things. And I know a lot of we have a lot of testimony um, when the uh, economy of the United States came crashing down in 2008. You can ask many of our brothers. None of them said, I don't have a job and I don't know how I'm going to pay my bills. When the whole world was saying that that's exactly what they were doing, they they didn't have work and they didn't know where they were going to find work while our church work was abundant um, it didn't stop and God took care of our necessities he allowed us to soar above that storm while the United States was going through a terrible time in terms of the economy at that time and right now um, our whole church 
like 50% or even 25% of us have not gotten infected with COVID-19. A lot of us have tested negative for COVID-19. I believe there has only been one brother that tested positive, but he came out okay as well. Um, and it, the, the COVID-19 um, didn't actually affect him in a way that he had to um, be in a hospital for months on end. And we didn't even hear about him. I'm talking about our, our brother Chris. And, and God bless you, brother, if you're listening to this. Um, you know, we're, we're happy that he's okay. But we know that when we trust in God, he allows us to fly above the storm, above what the world is going to through. Um, point C is the eagle can fly towards the sun without being dazzled. If you have ever been driving down a straight road, and the sun is hitting your face, sometimes it looks like you kind of have to, I don't know, try to put something over your eyes. You have to put the visor down because our eyes are not made to withstand the rays of the sun. However, the eagle's eyesight is very different from ourselves. They actually, they can bear the brightness of the sun for um, a certain period of time. So, while others are losing, other birds are losing their line of sight, they're still focused and walking directly towards God. Us, we cannot let the sun, the temptations of, of the world, the, the, the sins of the world, everything else that comes towards us, we cannot lose focus of our line of sight, which is God. He is the light, and it also says that in his word, I am the way, I am the light. So we have to keep our focus on the light. Do not lose focus. There's going to be a short period of time where if you lose that focus, it's going to be extremely hard to then regain your focus. There's a lot of young people that say, oh, right now I'm young. Later on, uh, I'll, I'll start going to church again and I'll be more consistent with all that. A lot of people have said that and they come back to church years, years and years down the line. So don't think that because you're young right now, you have maybe a couple months, you don't have that time. People, we do not know what tomorrow lies ahead. And also it's written in his word that tomorrow is not promised for us as well, which is something else to keep in mind. So do not lose sight of the light. Point number two is the eagle has special characteristics. The eagle has great vision. So, um, ever wonder why an eagle can fly down and swoop up its prey? It's because it has great, um, a great uh, eyesight. So it can actually see things from very far away. That's why they're able to fly very high up and swoop down with no problem at all. So when we see something, um, when we have the ability to see with our own eyesight, our own eyesight may be obstructed by other things. However, since we are eagles and we are sons of God, we actually have a very great eyesight if we are willing to have God be our guiding eyesight to, towards many things. There are people, and listen to what I'm saying right now, there are people that have prospered greatly, whether it's their job, their health, their marriage, because they allow God to be their eyesight for those decisions that they're making. And we can't explain why we're making these decisions. We maybe don't even have uh, human, uh, a human, a uh, human, what's the word? Uh, a humanly explanation as to why I'm doing this thing. What I mean by that is, uh, I'm sorry, here's a word, Log a logical reason of why we're doing certain things. Because when you have guy, uh, God be your eyesight towards things, there's going to be things that might not have a logical explanation at the moment. Then later on, you find out that it was the perfect logical explanation, but you might not see it right away. That's why you have to have God be your trusting guide 
towards every decision that you make, even if it looks like a crazy decision at the moment, you make sure you have God as your guiding resource. Um, point B is the eagle desires freedom. So although we were born free, we can become slaves to sin. And as eagles, we have to desire freedom just like the actual eagles in nature uh, desire freedom. You cannot have an eagle caged up and expect it to be just like every other eagle. It's going to have limitations. It might not even be able to feed itself like the eagles do in nature that have freedom. So um, if you desire freedom, the less likely you are to fall into sin. To fall into these traps. Uh, remember, if someone is addicted to alcohol, chances are there's going to be a time where he's going to go and get alcohol and then he can't drive even though sometimes they do end up driving and then they may, might end up getting in a wreck and then they have to go to the hospital. But they, since they're addicted to alcohol, they still find a way to get more alcohol. The cycle continues it's a vicious, terrible cycle to be stuck on alcohol. Uh, smoking is also the same way. It's a terrible thing to be tied down to. And you become a slave to these things. Sooner or later, you're no longer that free young person because you consume so much tobacco or alcohol that now you're reliant on these things. Or maybe you have actually caught uh, cancer because... That's what cigarettes do. They they end up causing cancer. Alcohol also tears up your body um, from the inside out if you consume um, a lot of it. And it can lead to some very terrible decision making as well. So for you to if you desire that freedom, this is not the way to go. Alcohol and, and doing what you want and being out with friends partying all night is not freedom. And a lot of people think that that's freedom. That being away from home and not having a time to come back home, that that's the best freedom you can take. It's completely wrong. Um, if you have parents that care about you and tell you not to do these things and maybe even have a curfew for you to come back home, these are parents that want to teach you discipline. And if you have discipline, you will be able to have freedom. You will be able to have hopefully a good job one day that you can actually raise a family and you can actually take decisions um, without having to worry about a vice problem or being tied down to something. And I hope everyone in our class understands that freedom is not being tied down to these things of the world. Um, point C is the eagle knows how to teach his children. So if a young eagle cannot fly out of the nest the the eagle that's the adult pushes that eagle out so it can try to move its wings to try to elevate itself and if the baby eagle um, cannot actually do it at that moment then they come down and swoop up the the young eagle and take it back to safety back to the nest and the process repeats over and over until they can finally fly on their own and they're able to be more independent. The same way God tests us um, to be able to be more independent, to be able to fly out on our own, to be able to do things also that um, we're going to have to do as grown-ups. That's why many times there has to be trials and tribulations that come our way. Because they produce that character in us. Um, they produce that, um, that character that we all need to have as we grow older. Um, and that's why God sends these tests out uh, towards our way. We have to know how to say no to a friend that's offering us something that we know is not good for us. We have to be able to know what to do when we, whenever we find maybe a wallet on the road and not try to find the money that's in there and run. We need to be able to know what to do when, when we have 
a certain responsibility as Christians to either not do something or to do something. So therefore, God sends these tests out so that way we can have that characteristic. And he's building that characteristic daily in our life. And once you pass that test, you'll be able to move on to the next test, the next test. And God will build that character in your life if you're willing to go through that. They're not fun. Many of them are not. I didn't have a very fun time um, in my high school career, I guess you can say, or my high school time. But I can say now that I needed those moments, that I needed those moments that were not fun to be able to build the character um, towards what I'm working on today. And I can tell you right now that if you're going through something that you don't like, something that's not fun and you're like, well, this is really difficult and all, sometimes difficult things build that character in your life for you to be something in life. So please, if it's the will of God and you're sure it's the will of God, but you don't like it, still go through with it, especially if it's the will of God. And don't be afraid to ask for your brothers and sisters for prayer. We're always around to make sure that you get the help that you need to be able to move forward in your life. Don't think that you have to go through it at, through at it alone. Um, prayer is the best thing you can give someone. Not money, not material things. Prayer, and I can speak from my own experiences is the best thing you can give someone. Now, it's also good to be generous with money. It's also good to be able to bless our brothers with something that might be material if you feel it in your heart. But trust me, prayer is the best thing you can give your brother and sister. It's prayer. And I can say that with experience as well. Our third and final point here, the eagle is always young and this is that characteristic I was talking about earlier that an eagle goes through a rejuvenation process and we're going to actually talk about it in detail right here is um the eagle is renewed for long life so it is the longest uh, living bird the eagle it lives almost 100 years but to reach that age it must take a serious and difficult decision so um, about halfway through the eagle's life cycle, I'm guessing probably around 40, 50 years old, um, the eagle actually has to find a safe place, probably um, the highest altitude it can find in the mountains, kind of where, where it is right now. Um, it has to find a safe place um, where it actually goes, and for it takes about, um, let me see here, I know it says it in the book here, it lasts about five months um, where it goes through a process, a rejuvenation process. And what happens during this process is they actually hit their beak and they hit it so many times that it actually falls off. It even causes bleeding to an extent. It's not a, a pleasant feeling for them. It hurts, but they have to keep doing it until the beak is basically... Uh, cracked or so damaged that a new beak has to actually grow and when the new beak is growing in place um, they actually use the short beak before it grows the full distance to start plucking out all its feathers because the feathers that they currently had at that moment might be really thick so that way they need new feathers um, so they can actually capture again what the altitude and the airflow that birds need to fly at a very high altitude. So it starts plucking out all the old feathers um, and then they start growing brand new feathers. And also once the beak reaches its full length, they also tear out the, the, um, the claws, if you want to say, that they have on their, on their feet. They start plucking out the nails. Um, and it's also a very painful process, but they pluck out all the claws that they have until they have none and new claws start growing in their place. And after a very 
difficult process of five months of, of kind of uh, tearing out their their body and then they re they heal back up again with brand new feathers, a brand new beak and brand new um, claws or nails, whatever you want to call them. Um, once they come out again, they're rejuvenated. They're good to go again. They have new everything and they can continue their life cycle as an eagle. And they do that at least once. Uh, sometimes maybe they even do it three or four times. I don't know about that, but I know they do this at least once um, to kind of rejuvenate their um, life life cycle. And just like the eagle, point B, God promises to renew our strength. As young people, we do become very frustrated and sometimes we have no desire to live and move forward. And the reason why I know this is because I've also experimented that same feeling in my life as a, as a young man growing up, really not knowing what to do. Um, for a long time, I was going to college not even knowing really what I wanted to become, what I, what my career choice is. And that's just a very small example of all the different questions that I had. Um, and very many times you feel tired. You feel like you have no direction. Um, you feel like your strength is running out. Um, you want to keep going because they say when you're young, it's when you got to move is when you got to do things. Because once you get older, you don't really have those opportunities anymore. And it may be true to a, a certain extent. But what I'm here to tell you, young young women or young men, is that God promises to renew your strength. I don't know where in the world I would have been right now if God hadn't renewed my strength as a young man uh, growing up. And I know it might sound corny right now because you hear it so many times, but you're hearing it once again through someone that's been there, that's done that, that had, it didn't happen in 1967. It didn't happen in 1972. It happened um, just a couple years back. This last year, I turned 30 years old. Um, this year, I'm going on 31. So it wasn't that far back. It was about maybe five years. It was only five years ago when I was 25 years old. And I had these feelings. Um, more like 22 years old, I'm sorry, uh, 25, it was something different. But around 22 years old, 21, you're running around, you don't know really what to do. Sometimes you don't have any direction. But God promises to renew your strength. And every time you have a difficult day, every time you have a difficult week or a difficult month, you can always rely on God to renew your strength. If you... Take the time um, at the end of your day, not just when you have a hard day, but every day to read your Bible, to hear a sermon, to pray. You find renewed strength to keep going for the next day, and you find trust that your life is going to be taken care of because you're in the best hands possible, which are the hands of God. And yeah, you're... You might be thinking, my job is a problem, my my social life is a problem, I, I don't know where this is, what's going to happen with this or what's going to happen with that, but things will surely but slowly start to make sense if you put your life and your trust in the hands of Jesus Christ. So I pray and I hope that you actually make the decision to trust in God, to put all your potential towards him and to actually renew your strength like the eagle, to take decisions, um, living far away from sin like the eagle lives far away from, from, its, um, from its predators, and to also desire freedom and to know that the trials will produce patience in you um, as you start growing up. Because we only grow up once. So... 
we only have one opportunity. And I hope that you guys, once you reach your 40s, once you reach your 50s, you can go back until the next generation that's coming, that you're happy with what you did in your life, that you're happy that you chose to walk in God's path and not walk in man's path, which um, leads to destruction every single one of the times. Okay, let's go ahead and pray. Um, thank you, Jesus Christ, for this teaching that you have given us. Thank you for everything that you have done for us, God. Thank you, God, for teaching us that we are eagles, God, that, that we need to fly high above the storms, that we need to um, find solitude, God, away from sin, far away from it, God, high up in the mountains like the eagles do, and also renew our strength, God, because you have promised, God, that you will renew our strength each and every day, God, whenever we're having a tough day, a tough week, a tough month, whatever the case might be, God, you rescue us when we need your help, God. And I ask, God, that every single young person that's, that, that was listening to me right now, that they might understand, God, that the best future lies in you, God, in your teachings, God, are for a lifetime, and that you will be there to look out for them, God, for, for, their, for their personal life, as well as their spiritual life, God, and also, um, hopefully, their, their family's life as well, God, whenever um, they make that decision to, to start a family as well, God. I desire these young women to be successful. I desire them, God, to be even further from where I am right now, God. So I hope they, they hear my teaching, God, that you have given me, and I hope they hear your voice, God, and that they turn over to you, God, in their times of need, God. And you may renew their life and their strength every single day, God, whenever they're going through something that might be tough for them. In the name of Jesus, I pray for them. Amen. All right. Thank you, everybody, for um, taking the time to listen. We have the second class, also uh, Lessons from Nature. And Brother Dennis is going to give that class. And um, I know he's going to um, work uh, and study it and, and be able to communicate that message as well uh, to you guys. Um, I keep praying for you. I keep praying for your protection uh, from COVID, this pandemic that we have going on. Um, and I know you guys are going to be okay um, because God is on your side. And that's the best thing we can have on our side as well. All right. Uh, God bless you. Uh, God bless your family. And uh, good night.